I feel like I get corona off a party. Um, I got corona the correct way. Motherfuckers just get corona from opening the door. Now. If I can get it from the door, come on, man. I'm trying to have fun. I'm trying to have fun. <laughs> All right, we back with another episode of Explicit Content. I'm live with my dog, Spencer. Spencer Sanders uh, of Arrival Clothing, you feel me? Been my dog for a minute. We've been locked in. Facts. Um, so you got some real dope shit popping. Uh, we in LA right now. That's where you living now. First, you feel me? I want to dive in. You feel me? My brother from Detroit, so let's dive in there. Uh, how was growing up in Detroit? Growing up in Detroit me? was, I mean, it was definitely different. It's harder because it's like, Right now, the music industry is starting to pop in Detroit, but that's like just not happening. Right. So it was like before that, we like Detroit had no recognition. It wasn't no spotlight out of Detroit that was like really just generating traffic for like a national standpoint. And besides that, it was like, you know, Detroit is obviously violent. People that really wasn't into like the arts and the fashions at the time. So growing up, it definitely was hard, but I feel like it helped mold, it molded me and definitely helped mold my brand and like the image to how I wanted to build my brand. And just, you know, everything about it, like, without Detroit, I definitely wouldn't be where I'm at, but, you know what I'm saying, I had to leave, though, I had to advance to another state. Okay. So, I mean, obviously, before you feel me, like you said, it motivated you. So, uh, growing up in Detroit, like, were you always into fashion, or how was the fashion? I know it's, that's like Motown type shit, so it's a music scene, like you said, mm -hmm. but where did you get your fashion influence from, or you feel me? Yeah, I got my fashion influences, like, indirectly from my Dukes. She's been in, um, she's been in the fashion game for 15, 16 years now. She's been a uh, store owner. At one point, she had three stores, so she's always just been doing good. And I remember just, like, right when I got in high school, I was uh, going to the gender show, the gender magic show. Yeah. I was going there, like, not really knowing much about clothes. I'm just going, just my mom. And she like, yeah, just go venture off by yourself and see what you, you know, can see. So I was just, like, fucking around, ran into a bunch of different people, met some influences, and then, yeah. And then, yeah, so really my dukes, besides my dukes, that's really where I got my fashion sense from, though. Alright, so how was that? What were you saying? You were messing with Yeah, so I remember when I first got to, like, maybe the first main one I, you know, like, started to realize and recognize and, like, see was, like, John Geiger, uh, Joe Fresh Goods. I remember niggas popping on Twitter mm -hmm. and shit. Like, when I was Joe Fresh Goods and John Geiger, like, they was two people that was at the um, Agenda Magic shows. And I was just, like, as a young nigga, I was, like, running around, just, like, see how they move. I was still too shy to, like, speak to them and, like, interact with them, but it was, like, them. Uh, my homeboy Davin, he's one of my mentors now, but that's where I first met Davin was at the Gender Show. He had a brand called um, Premium Co. He got um, Diet Star Monday now. So, oh, mm -hmm. so yeah. at that time, you had designs out, right? Uh, at that time, I had nothing out. I had a name, and no, I didn't even have a name yet. I just had, I was literally just going like, my Duke's class, she got to take me with okay, her. Okay, it was okay. like, yeah. All right, so put me, put me into, I remember when I, when I met you, was like, I was like 15, 16. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you feel me? You was giving me a rival merch and shit. Um, and that's when you said it was merch. Yeah, at that yeah at that time I was literally just like, I was at my hustle stage. Like around that time, that's when the world or like people our age they really started to get into clothes for real. Yeah. You know, as a you young, you just throw on anything. But like when we was going to Howard Homecomings and we was traveling, everybody wanted to be you know in the latest. Fact, yeah. So I was like, okay, I gotta figure out how I'm about to give me some money. So I was really just I had Howard Homecoming T-shirts. I was just good at. You know, selling products, really like marketing talking stuff. Niggas. Yeah, talking and kicking with people on some like some real genuine shit. So it was just like, yeah, I'm about to just sell it as merch, take this money, and go buy me some rap Simmons at the time. Like, yeah, I was in that like, shit like that. So yeah. So then, okay. So how was you when you, when you put out your first designs? Uh, I started putting on designs like my junior year of high school, and now like I said, I was just doing that just to right, flip right. money. So then that's when you said like that was merch. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So. What's the difference basically between merch and then what you have now is like a clothing line? Yeah, I feel like the difference between merch and clothing brands is I feel like when you sell a merch, that's just like you're just doing that to try to either push a different objective or literally just to try to like run up some bread real quick. Okay. So like that's why a lot of artists they do merch is like they just helping that to push their projects. Right. Rather than they really focus and putting together a nice collection that they want to see people actually wear. So yeah, I feel like that's the difference. Like I was just making stuff then, like just so I can sell it. I really didn't care if people wore it or not. I didn't care where they wore it to or stuff like that. But like now, yeah, I like legal hustle type. Shit. Yeah, now I make shit. Like I want to, I want to go to the club and see niggas wearing this shit, or I want to be walking up the street and I see somebody pop out fresh with it on. Like that's the difference for real, though. Okay, for sure. So, like you said, I remember we uh, we was linked up at Howard Homecoming, 
That's damn near. It was either, I bought my first or second arrival teeter. I don't know. Mm-hmm. This nigga was selling shirts out the MCM bag, right? Yeah, here. literally. Yeah. He was selling shirts out the MCM bag. I had just met my homie. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Let me cop this shit. But so, okay. So then you feel me? That's, that was the merch stages. When did you decide, like, all right, I got to take my shit? You feel me? Level up. Because I know you was mm-hmm. a student at Howard at one point. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that literally was a turning point. Okay, so, so talk about how was that? How was that? You feel me? How did you transition from student to, you know? Mm-hmm. So that was my second year of college. And then, so when we met, I was a freshman. That was my, you you was, I was young. a senior high school. You was a senior high school. Yeah, that was my that was my first year of college. But I wasn't going there yet. I was going to a community college. Okay. So that's where we met. I made the, the merch stuff. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I kind of like the Howard vibe. I want to go there. So my second year, I went to Howard. I went to Howard for literally three weeks. Went there for the freshman week, uh, first week of classes. And I'm like, yeah, no, nah, this ain't for me. What was your major? Uh, biology. You know, you every like, you want to be a dentist. Yeah, yeah. I feel you know. I feel like every parent they want you to go be a lawyer or no, a dentist and sure. shit like that. So, I went to try to be a dentist, and yeah, after three weeks, I was like, I can't do it. At the same time, too, um, my tuition had went up. I don't know if it got to do with that. You remember that one scandal shit that was going yeah, on with the nah, Duke? Tyrone. Yeah, I don't know if it had something to do with that, but I know my tuition went up, and my Duke was like, she can't pay it no more. So I, I packed up all my stuff. Justice helped me. Uh, my assistant Justice, she's here with me right now. She actually helped me. She was the first person who had to leave Howard. So I like packed my shit up, and then I just like we mailed it back, and I hopped on the flight and left. Then when I got back to the city in Detroit, like that was like I feel like everybody got that time in their life when they like. Okay, yeah, I gotta figure out what I'm saying, what I'm about yeah. to do, like what I'm about to work on, because it's like, am I gonna do school or am I gonna, you know what I'm saying? How I'm gonna play it? So I was just like, fuck it. I already got a little following from the little basketball clout that I had and from when I was selling merch from me just like popping out crispy and stuff. So I was like, let me just try to take the clothes serious. And my mom, my Duke's office, she like, no, don't do that. Go back to school, blah, blah, blah. You know how parents is, because the times is different. Like, yeah, for sure. Like clothing, like anything creatively now is easier than it was for our parents and shit. So, they really didn't understand it, like the new social media wave and all that. They had no idea about that. So it was harder for them then, but yeah, I'm like, I gotta take it serious. So I started taking it serious. All right, damn, man, you feel me? So what was the process like, you feel me, from then and there, like as far as making designs, you feel me, building a team, mm-hmm. you feel me, you know, yeah. moving out of Detroit. I know you was in Atlanta for a little bit. Mm-hmm. So what from was there, the process like? Yeah, so from there, I was still in Detroit. I was making designs and stuff there, still like really trying to just get myself off the ground. Like it was still, you know, penny pension, not really putting out multiple projects at once, like really just putting out one or two pieces at once, like doing what I can afford. And then it was like, um, I'm like, okay, Detroit not getting it done for me. I got to expand. I got to go somewhere. Then I was just up and moved to Atlanta. It was like October 2018. I upped and moved to the A. That's moved to Atlanta. I was there for uh, a year. I was there a year. And that shit, Atlanta really would turn me up for it. I ain't gonna yeah, lie. No, I remember. Yeah, for sure. You know, I was out there for school and shit. So, I, I mean, now you feel me, obviously, you got to arrive to a point, you feel me, where you wanted to be. I'm, I, I know you feel me, it's always room for growth, mm-hmm. but is that a point you wanted to be, right? Or? Yeah, uh, that actually, it was it was a point where I wanted to be, like, I was linking all the right people, I was getting calls from all different rappers, like, oh, pull up to the studio, blah, blah, blah. Like, I was doing everything that any young designer would want, would want to do, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, And then it got to a point where it was like, I mean, I was making my money, I started making the most money I ever seen, I was... You know what I'm saying living better, doing good. And it was just like it just clicked like oh that's not even enough. Yeah, so then sure. at that point I was like, okay, Atlanta only got like, you know what I'm saying I love Atlanta to death because that's what really like helped take me to the next level. But Atlanta only got like really one market. You know what I'm saying? So, that's like hip hop. Yeah, hip hop, trap art, yeah, sure. you know, trap scene. That's really it. Like out here, that's how I got to move to LA next. Out here is you got the actors, you got whatever skateboarders, you got. Famous random people, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Whatever. It's, street, yeah, it's, just, it's so many avenues out here. So it was just like that. Got to be my next step because I'm not trying to be just a popular hip hop brand. Nah, for sure. Like I'm trying to take my shit to. So a bunch of street yeah, street exactly. Street. So all right, damn. Uh, so yeah, how did you get thugging to me? Or you was just like pulling up the studios. Or uh, I first got who was the um, first thug had my stuff a long time ago from. Jordan, young Jordan. Okay, yeah, Jordan. Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah, I met Jordan. I met him on y'all campus yeah, actually. Nah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, and then that was like one sophomore freshman. Yeah, that was. A, yeah, I met him there, and he Facetimed me one day when he was with the thug. Like, yeah, I want some of that stuff. So that was years ago. I gave him some of my old stuff, and then fast forward to like uh, he was on tour with um, Machine Gun Kelly, oh, and yeah. then I got a home girl that's cool with uh, a bunch of niggas in the YSL camp, and then. Um, 
a DJ, uh, he, a famous DJ in Detroit. He just died, uh, Rip Slick B. He, well, he's like real cool, with like Duke and like all of them. So he, yeah, he called me like, yeah, I'm about to go to the concert, but I got a DJ a set. Uh, if you want to come, let me know. So I hop, like he called me like ten minutes before the beat her. So I like just jumped in the whip and went straight downtown. And same time, I had Gurley putting in the word for me, like my homeboy pulling up with some Gary trying to you trying to lace the blah blah blah. So I got there. And then uh, Duke was like, I'm like, I gave Duke the clothes. Like, yeah, you can get us a thug, whatever. He's like, no, nah, I'm let you give it to him yourself. And I'm like, oh, shit. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's real shit. So then, yeah, we, uh, at the end of the show, we was on, like, going to the tour bus. He came out, met him and shit, gave him the clothes. And then that was it. He wore it. But um, I had, you know what I'm saying? I had locked in with um, Duke or whatever. He told me, like, whenever I hit him, let's, like, DM him and shit. And then he would let me know what's going on and so shit like that. And then I ended up meeting Wheezy, though. At LAX, he had, I had recognized him. So I walked to him like blah blah blah. We exchanged numbers, and then we was texting and shit. So he be letting me know now, nah, like when they in the studio and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I could eventually get gunning them shit. But I I've been like putting that to the side a little bit until I'm all the way ready. Cause I, when I when I go ready, now I go and really get you know what I'm saying getting good with certain yeah, people. Type, yeah, I want to be prepared for the moment for real. So yeah, that's how I got thugging my shit though. Yeah, all right, so what would you say like exactly like your luxury streetwear? You, you one of the first things I heard when you market they said is luxury streetwear. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's uh, when I look at luxury streetwear, I look at like quality, of course, quality, but I look at the lifestyle behind it. So, like, obviously, brands like Off White, uh, just like I'm just about to name a couple like luxury streetwear, like black designers that I like admire and like look up to, and I like them, they're like following that guideline. So, it's like them, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Ru- Ruigi. The owner yeah. of Rue, yeah. um, uh, Murder Bravado. I met him personally, so me and him, like, we, 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 we talked a couple times, so I know, like, he knows me, I know him, but Murder Bravado, he just, like, I feel like he just broke the barriers to that point. Oh, mm-hmm. As a recent, he just sure. made that, he just made that leap, so, like, just those type of guys. Here, here on Preston, um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? No, yeah, I got Brick that. Owens, he got that, he kind of up there at the point, too, so. Sure. So what would you say next for like arrival in four years? Uh, four years, I definitely want to be in stores like whatever popping stores is then, but like high end, like Neiman's, uh, say Chicago, like RSVP Gallery, high end boutiques, high end major retailers, Saks. I want to be in those type of stores and like you, you know what I'm saying. Storefront anytime soon? Or no? Uh, no, when I come storefront, I wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be on that type of level. Like, I don't want to half step and just open up a storefront just to build. I feel like I could just build the way I'm building. And then, so I know it, at the end of the day, it all take time. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So I want to just build it up and eventually get storefront when I'm at that point of like a like a rule. Because like a rule is a really popular brand, but you know what I'm saying? They're not like a Virgil right now. Yeah, but they, they, they in stores and then mm-hmm. you can have a, a flagship, what they call it. Like, yeah, exactly. So, so, I mean, with everything going on right now, like, you know, like the whole Black Lives Matter and shit, um, how would you say, like, you feel about that as far as, like, Designers have inclusive inclusivity programs, and you feel me, mm-hmm. stuff like that. You think you feel me? We need more, or you feel me? What's next for black designers and fashion? Um, black designers is definitely. Um, I know you just named it a lot. You feel me? That's why. I yeah. Think about this. Definitely, I think black designers definitely should do a little bit more, but it's kind of harder for designers. Like even when I was younger, and my mom, she was like, like molding me into a designer and showing me like, how to be a creative. For like when you got a creative, and you got a platform. For the most part, just speaking on my like on my perspective, you're not supposed to really have a extreme public opinion. So I kind of gotta just like go with what's you know what I'm saying appropriate. Yeah, yeah I gotta go, like brand. yeah I gotta go with appropriate. Like I have certain conversations, but I keep it you know what I'm saying necessarily private. Like I'm all for Black Lives Matter and you know what I'm saying make sure everything is you know, all of that. But it's like sometimes people they say things and they're like. They make a mistake and say something this way and don't really want to say it that way. Right. And now people, they canceling you. And now you are canceled. You They cancel you because you made a mistake and did this and did that. Mm-hmm. So I feel like a lot of public figures, they should just, you know, say what's appropriate and not really go too deep into it. So I, but programs definitely for sure, like, it should be more designs. Like me, I'm working on more designs now that's catered towards just the Black Lives Matter movement. Sure. But like, besides that, I want to just, you know what I'm saying? Just be, yeah. So, all right. All right. Any um, or what would you say to any you feel me, young nigga, young designer, you feel me, want to be in your shoes? You feel me? Uh, work hard. I remember it was times when it was like, 
I literally remember times when I couldn't sell like five shirts. Now like I put something out, I'll just drop it on my story and I'll do like an instant like 85, 90 sales. And it was just like times I couldn't do that. So I'd literally be amazed at myself, but I just stuck with it. Like everybody that knew me from back when I was still like hustling t shirts, they always say, Oh, he always stuck with it because like, we all know people that have brands and they like they do it for a second then they just like stop doing it then they fall off but like, yeah they got it, but they have potential though you just got to be consistent with it like being consistent and really just like believe believe what you got going on you got to believe and like really know like okay i'm about to make it i'm about to do this and you got to just like you know what i'm saying you got to just make people believe when the next drop uh three weeks i'm getting the right now right now i got I'm working on getting a warehouse out here like a warehouse office space sure. so i'm taking care of that t-shirts or food, food. Mm-hmm hoodies uh more high quality hoodies everything like every time i drop new clothes it always like i try to do better with the quality what's up with the inferno hoodies niggas always asking i don't like those for real i don't like them yeah yeah i'm not coming back out huh i mean i'm gonna put them out but the type of person i am just like but i thought i was tripping until i had a conversation with one of my mentors he like no i'm the same way that you're supposed to be like that's how you know you're growing every time i make something i put it out i don't like it no more like every single time like i'll put something out i'm like damn i don't like me personally i don't like it no more like none i got out right now i don't like it, but people they love it so it's like okay but i'm just working on the next that's how i got to be so i'm gonna put it out again like on like some retro drop shit so for people that never had a chance to see it or you sure. know what i'm saying 2021 type show. yeah yeah i'm gonna bring it back though maybe no this fall actually yeah okay. since it's hoodie season shit uh all right well what's some like inspirational quotes that you live by you feel me uh quote that I, mean, yeah, I got a couple. Quote, I got a couple though. Okay. Like when, so even when I was younger, like all all of my stuff, like a bunch of my designs when I was younger, it was um, "Hate me now, love me later." That's one of the ones I always you had. See shit like that in your designs. Mm-hmm. That I got that one. Another one that's real big that I've been running with since I first started was "Everybody hates you till they love you." That's one of my most like, like I, I got that from a Childish Gambino song back like way back before he blew it he was like completely underground like 2009 childish gambino but like that shit for me it just mean like to keep pushing like no matter what like if somebody hates you like hate and love is like the same emotion in my mind so it was like it's just you know what i'm saying it's just expressed differently so i feel like they either hate you or they love you but it's really the same it's just you know what i'm saying they hate you not they ain't gonna love they gonna love you when you do what you gotta do sure. so that's just like that quote everybody has to say love you uh, I said, hate me now, love me later. Born broke, die rich. Uh, that's one another one I like. Like these are like quotes that just come up my head all the time because it's like I was born broke, but I'm really want to like die rich. So it's like this like just a hard work type of mindset. For sure. All right, now you just made me think about something. So since you a designer, shit, let's say you feel me, you wear your brand a lot though, right? Mm-hmm. You got a hundred dollars. How you getting fresh? Hundred dollars. I'm putting on white tee. Pair of white white phaso ones. That's eighty. That's eighty. Okay. Oh no. Yeah. White T little gas station. Gas 85, station. White T. That's eighty five. Yeah. Pump and shit. You got the crib. No socks. Yeah. No, I got socks at the crib. Hundred dollars. What, what, what I'm gonna do? Pants wise. I'll go thrifting. Find me some. Find me some little ten dollar heat in there. Five ten dollar heat. Well, H and M jeans. Niggas used to get. Yeah, I used to get flea. Yeah, yeah. Niggas used to get flea with H and M jeans. H and M jeans like high school. But shit, man, it's been real. That's what's, that's what's up, man. Glad to have you on here. Yeah, appreciate you, bro. Uh, drop your social and shit so niggas can follow you. Instagram, Twitter, Spencer X Sanders. Uh, Arrival Worldwide is the Instagram page. ArrivalWorldwide dot co is the website. Like I said, that next drop in three weeks, so y'all get in tune. You feel me? Tap with my boy. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, bro. It's on. Go on that tablet.